Have you ever struggled with the question, if God is real, why would evil exist? I have to be honest with you, I struggle with the same exact question. But we answer, when we answer this question, I think we have to remember that when we ask a question like this, there are assumptions that we are making within the question that when we bring them to light may actually help us come to the right conclusion. C.S. Lewis said, it is critically important to examine the assumptions within a question. For example, when we ask, why does God allow evil to exist? We are, we are assuming two things about God. Number one, that God has the ability to remove evil from existence, testifying to his power. And two, that God does not want evil to exist at all, testifying to his goodness. But the question still remains, if God is so powerful and if God is so good, why doesn't he just get rid of evil altogether? Well, let's first address this idea of good versus evil. If I were to ask you, what is evil? I would probably get answers like the Holocaust, Hitler, 9-11, to which I would of course agree those things are most definitely evil, but then I would have to follow up with the question of how do you know those things are evil? I think the universal answer would be because that's not the way things are supposed to be. No human should have to go through the pain and the suffering of types of events like those. However, the only possible way to come to, to a conclusion that something should be done a certain way is if there is an objective standard to compare it to. Evil cannot be evil unless there's a standard, standard of good. Good cannot be good unless there is someone to establish it as good. And the one who established our standard for good was God himself. He is our standard of good and evil. Without God, there is no such thing. Second, let's address the idea of evil being removed. In order for God to remove evil from the equation, something else has to be removed as well. Man's ability to choose between good and evil would have to be revoked. We call this free will. When God created Adam and Eve, he, he desired to have a personal and loving relationship with them, but in order for a loving relationship to exist, there needs to be freedom to choose. If God did not give Adam and Eve a choice, he would have been forcing them into something that they had no say in. And as we, as we know, Adam and Eve chose to disobey God. And as a result, sin and death entered the world. Not because God wanted them to sin, but because God wanted them to have a choice. I don't think evil is an issue of God's power or lack thereof. I believe it is an example of his love. So in summary, an objective good and objective evil could not exist without an objective moral standard of right and wrong and someone to establish it as such. And in order for evil to be removed, man's free will would need to be removed as well. So blaming God for evil or using evil as evidence that God doesn't exist only pushes us further and further away from the truth. You see, the responsibility of evil does not fall on God, but man. When God created the world, he created it good, Genesis 131. He did not create evil, nor did he intend evil. It was through the sinful act of man that evil came to be. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. The Bible also says that due to sin, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That, that's in Jeremiah 17, 9. We, we cannot escape the responsibility of our sin and the wickedness of our own hearts. But thankfully, despite our sin, God has provided a solution for the evil. Instead of leaving us to resolve the problem of evil on our own, he offers to us forgiveness. Forgiveness is the Christian's answer to the problem of evil. John 3, 16 and 17, I'm sure we all know it, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus' death was the sacrifice that you and I needed in order to rid us of the ultimate consequence of evil, eternal separation from God forever. Forgiveness is available to all, but one must come to Christ believing in faith that he is who he claims to be. Where are you at today? 
Do you doubt the existence of God because of the evil in this world? My hope for you today is that you rethink any previous thought that God cannot be all good or all powerful simply because evil surrounds us today. Instead, allow the existence of evil and our questions surrounding this topic to draw us closer to a holy and perfect God.